Thank you so much, Orlando, for so many things. Uh, I'm Pat Afterhattie, and I too would like to welcome you. Uh, I, it was a spooky feeling watching the people in line this morning. I felt like my entire life was passing before my eyes. <laughs> Some of you know things about me that I'm really sorry about. Uh, but I am really proud of this conference, which is called Mapping Public Media, because I think it shows um, us stretching our imaginations together in a really exciting way. I think what we're trying to do together is to figure out what the potential is for a public media for a digital and participatory era. And I want, before I hand this conference over to Jessica Clark, I want to spend just a few minutes talking about only one word, which is public, which is, I think, the meaningful part of that phrase, public media. Uh, at the Center for Social Media, we are, are big fans of John Dewey, and not only because he's the guy you can reference in America when you can't reference Karl Marx, but <laughs> Also, because he had a really great understanding of who the public was in a democracy, which was people who can talk to each other about the problems that they have in common and how to solve them. Um, this is an idea that Yochai Benkler has made real for a digital era in the book called Wealth of Networks. And he's shown how networks make it possible for the first time for the public at large to build publics that are meaningful by creating their own media a fascinating, exciting, and to some people, terrifying idea. Um, this is an idea that also is very alive in the work of Henry Jenkins, uh, who describes how people seize on the raw materials of their culture, which, of course, used to be finished materials before they got to them, uh, in order to make creative new work that creates community, uh, that constitutes themselves as members of the public, potentially, and, and fuels the knowledge to help them solve problems. So this conference, whatever else we're doing today, has a common thread running through it. It's that whatever public media is, wherever, as Orlando says, it appears, whether it's commercial or non-commercial, whether it's digital or analog, uh, is public media at the point at which it lets people become members of the public. And it really doesn't matter from that perspective, on that definition, if we're talking about the Wikipedia entry on abortion, which is a constantly changing site in which people argue constructively about the definition of what that, what that word is. Uh, or perhaps it's a blog that links to other blogs that comment and critique it, and I think you'll see some really exciting examples of that in the demo room. Or whether it's the election maps that NPR and other public uh, broadcasters are using this year or American public media's public insight journalism, which turns uh, listeners and viewers uh, into active co-researchers. Or the stories, often heartbreaking, sometimes fascinating, that StoryCorps collects across the nation from people whose stories would never have been heard by others. Or whether it's Global Voices, blogs from worlds apart from us until those people spoke directly to us. Or the, world, the news that One World showcases from nonprofits across the, uh, across the globe, harvesting information that otherwise would have been buried in the good but often very uh, geographically limited work of nonprofits everywhere. Or whether we're talking about PBS's story share, from uh, stories from grassroots America that interact in exciting ways with highly, highly crafted, beautifully produced professional work like Ken Burns' The War, or whether we're talking about a multiplayer game like ITVS's World with Our Oil, I could go on and on. These are all very, very different examples from different sectors of public media. And the important part of it is the public part, not the media part. Because you know what? The media part is easier than it's ever been. Really high quality media is never going to be easy. But everybody can make some kind of media now. And YouTube is clogged with this stuff, most of which we don't want to watch. The hard part is the public part. The part where people connect with each other, they find something meaningful that is about things that they really need to deal with in their lives, a problem that they share with others, and the, uh, uh, a solution that if they can find it is a way to rebalance injustice, inequality, and uh, the imbalances of power that come with aggregation of power. So can you create media that helps people come together to figure out solutions to common problems? 
If you can, then that's what we think public media is. The reason why that's a big idea is it's not something that you get to be. You don't get to be public media. You have to earn it every single time you make a connection with somebody. Uh, you don't just get to live in a zone and pat yourself on the back for being the good guys. Uh, you don't just get to say, hey, I'm a member of the public because I spoke, so I created something on YouTube, so I'm, uh, I'm doing public media. Public media is public when you connect with people in ways that help them find others and uh, solve problems in their lives. So we, we actually wrote this vision down. It's the public media FAQ. It's in every single bag. Um, and every single panelist today has read this document, is working with this concept. See, Orlando this morning looked at it. So with that, I'd like to segue to the next speaker, Jessica Clark, who's our research director, the organizer of this conference. And, um, and I'd like to start with uh, that presentation with a video that explains the title of this conference.